And in the next 30 minutes, Joy News uncovers details of how a private Ghanaian healthcare facility front healthcare services bagged over 80 million dollars out of a questionable COVID-19 airport testing contract. Tonight, we interrogate the controversial decision to outsource rapid COVID-19 testing at the Kutuka International Airport with critics launching a scathing attack on management for superintending a ripoff of the Ghana Airport Company. Top story as always is brought to you by Vodafone. Further together, I am blessed to go. And uh, tonight, uh, Joy News is beginning to get fine details of how a private Ghanaian healthcare facility, Frontier Healthcare Services, bagged over eighty million dollars out of a questionable COVID-19 airport testing contract at the Kotoka International Airport for close to a year now. The Ghana Airport Company has been in a tussle with Joy News following a right to in information request demanding details of the circumstances under which this private healthcare facility frontier healthcare services was outsourced to carry out a rapid covid-19 testing at the kotaka international airport for many months the company declined to provide details of the contract forcing even the rti commission to slap a fine of 200,000 ghana cities on the airport company but finally tonight ghanaians will have the opportunity of gaining at least some deeper insight into the frontier healthcare services contract head of our research desk uh, raymond aqua is here with me for uh, some more on this uh, document uh, which has now been released from the ghana Airports company, Raymond. Uh, so let's get into the details now uh, by finding out uh, first of all the background to this contract. Why was Frontiers Healthcare Limited contracted? So the question we actually asked was to find out the same question: the chronology of the processes that led to the selection and award of the contract in uh, to the Frontiers Healthcare Services, mm. and they added that to the other question about the reasons for the selection and the award of the contract specified uh, uh, to con- to Frontiers Healthcare Services. <laughs> this was the answer they gave. They said, appearing before the co- appointments committee of Parliament on Tuesday, February 23, 2021, in Accra, the minister for transport explained that Ghana Airport Company, which operated the KIA, only rented its space to Frontiers Healthcare Services. And we need to be instructive on that. Yes, rented. Only, only rented its mm-hmm. space. Right. He said that th- this happened after the FDA had given confirmation on the certification of equipment to be used by Frontiers Healthcare Services. He also recounted that sometime in July or August, 2020, the president announced the government's inclination Mm. to reopen the borders of the nation to commercial air traffic subject to the availability of an effective system for COVID testing. Following this, okay. Frontiers Healthcare Services mm-hmm. expressed their preparedness to provide such service to the public. Uh, and, and we need to be very instructive on that point, that from the text we're getting yes. now, uh, the approach was first of all made, made by, by this private firm. Yes. yes, and that uh, they expressed their preparedness mm-hmm. to do this mm-hmm. to the testing at the place they were talking about. Yes, uh, indicating that its equipment had been tested by the Food and Drugs Authority. Now, the airport company did not rely on the bare word of Frontiers Healthcare Services. It sought to verify and confirm the due certification of the equipment of Frontiers. And on 20th of August 2020, the managing director of Ghana Airport Company wrote to the FDA to confirm the certification of Frontiers Healthcare Services. Explaining further, Mr. Siama, who is the transport minister, because yes. they are quoting him, him. Yes. said by a letter... Appearing before uh, yes, you know, parliament the parliamentary committee. committee yeah. By a letter dated August 25, 2020, the FDA wrote 
to the Ghana Airport Company indicating that it approved the equipment of Frontiers for use for the detection of SARS-CoV-2, that's the COVID-19 mm-hmm. virus, in Ghana. The on-site audit report carried on the equipment was attached to the letter he noted. He further informed the appointments committee the following receipt of information that the Ghana Airport Committee, intending to enter into an agreement with healthcare with uh, Frontiers, wrote to the Public Procurement Authority to seek its approval before executing any agreement with Frontiers Healthcare Services. I see. However, mm-hmm. interestingly, yes. by a, data, a letter dated August 26, 2020, the PPA replied to the Ghana Airport Company advising that mm-hmm. the rental of office space by Ghana Airport Company to another company fell outside the scope of the PPA Act. So this is the very first time mm-hmm. that, that the airport's company itself noticed that mm-hmm. something was, was, what, was a, a miss, actually, yes. with the contractual arrangements of, that, of this of yes this so they said before they contracted yes. the frontiers people they asked the ppa for advice and the ppa indicated that renting an office space to somebody fell outside the, the rule remit. yes mm-hmm. that um, required you to go to the ppa uh, and and that they should use their administrative processes to execute the transaction mm-hmm. Consequently, on yes. September 1, 2020, Ghana Airport Company entered into agreement with Frontiers to rent its office space to the company for consideration. The Minister for Transport, Dexine, further noted that the agreement was essentially for rental of office space and that some paragraphs it referenced in the agreement bear out this since the consideration payable by Frontiers was simply for the payment of rent and service or utility charges. In the said agreement, he also moved on to say mm-hmm. the airport company entered into with Frontiers. The transport minister designate further revealed that the laboratory service provider was also required to make a payment of royalties of ten dollars per each test done to the Ghana Airport Company. But the payment of royalties did not imply that the agreement had to receive a PPA, that's the Public Procurement yes. Authority approval. Mm-hmm. He also added that a precondition for an application to the PPA, PPA Act, and for that matter, obtaining PPA approval is the use of public funds in the procurement of goods, works, and services. But that, Ghana Airport Company did not procure the service of Frontiers with public funds. The company offered to provide laboratory services to the public mm-hmm. with their own equipment. No public funds were expended in getting them to provide the services to the public, apart from the provision of office space. Thus, the basic condition for an application for a PPA did not exist. How about the issue about the fees being charged? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because obviously, if you're charging fees, it must have been approved. Mm. Is the Ghana Airport Company providing some clarity on that? No, the question was asked Mm -hmm. and they said in their agreement with them, what they agreed was that they were getting a ten dollar fee, and, and then that specific for fee, renting. Yes, per each test done. Done. Okay. To the right. Ghana Airport, Airport Company, Company Limited. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is royalties you are paying to us yeah. for getting the space that we gave you. Mm-hmm. Now they told us the details of the amount you are dealing with here. Yes. First and foremost, they said that as of September 9, 2022, mm-hmm. when we had asked for the agreement and these details, yes. the total amount of the revenue generated from the COVID-19 testing at the airport from the inception of the agreement with frontiers mm-hmm. amounted to a little over 90 million us dollars for arrival testing mm-hmm. and te- a little over 30 million us in no, ghana cities right so the arrival is in dollars mm-hmm. the departure is in cities yes so the departure is 30 million, million cities uh, cities the dollar uh, one is the 90, 90 million, million for yes. arrival mm-hmm. Now, the question was also put to them. So, how much did Frontiers get? And uh, how precisely, much did, because we need to know how much we're, yes. we're getting as a state. So, they stated categorically that from the inception to the date, that is September 9, 2022, Frontiers got 84 million zero one six five hundred point six five dollars for the arrival mm-hmm. and 29 million one hundred and seventy six thousand and twenty CD for the departing testing. So, 84 million basically dollars yes. for arrival mm-hmm. 29 million cities for testing mm-hmm. then we also asked so how about the republic of ghana through you the ghana airport company then they said the revenue generated to the government of ghana from covid 19 testing was 5.999.749.33 that is 5,999,749.35 
a little under six million US dollars for the arrival testing and 1.535580 mm. for the departing one. In fact, uh, Ramon, you need to stay with me because yeah. uh, there's lots of reactions. Uh, j- I mean, greeting this very uh, controversial uh, contracts that we're learning of. And in fact, this will be a series uh, that will be running uh, and bringing you uh, bits and pieces of uh, the, the very shocking details that we're learning out of this uh, controversial contract. Uh, but uh, for those of you who haven't heard as of now, uh, the private firm Frontiers uh, Healthcare Services is now going home, Raymond, with a little over 80 million dollars. Uh, 84 million specifically for the arrival testing mm-hmm. and, and some 29 million for the departure testing. So that's the two that we are dealing with. There. 84 million for arrival testing, 29 million for departure testing. And in fact, uh, even in Parliament as we speak, uh, many members of uh, the House say they are concerned about this uh, very uh, contract arrangement. Uh, Raymond uh, Aqua is head of our research desk. Uh, also with me uh, now and joining us uh, via phone is the MP for not on Samuel Kujitoy Blakwa, uh, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Kwame Sapong Siedu, who's uh, a CDD fellow, also joining the conversation. Uh, we'll be getting uh, some clarifications from the Ghana Airports Company, which uh, is also uh, having a few more, uh, in, you know, interventions to make on this matter. But I want to hear from you, uh, Honorable Samuel Kujitwa Blakwa. Uh, you uh, earlier uh, this week and a couple of days ago uh, ha- has been chronicling uh, some of the uh, issues that you personally have found out as, as part of the components uh, relating to this controversial frontiers uh, deal. Uh, now we're getting a fine detail of how much the company is making. Uh, some. Remont once again, eighty-four million, million for the for arrival, the arrival. Testing, and then twenty-nine million cities, eighty-four million dollars, twenty-nine million cities. Put them together. That's how much uh, Frontiers got. And Mr. Kujato, you say this is a rip-off? A total rip-off. And let me commend you, at Joy FM, for your persistence, your dogged determination. Uh, you are dealing with an organization which has been very evasive, which has refused to be transparent and to be accountable. Uh, it has taken you a great deal of work uh, to get them after an RTI commission uh, ruling and, uh, and, uh, and a fine. Uh, and that is not the kind of conduct we expect from public officials. So first of all, we must condemn the conduct of officials at the Ghana Airport Company Limited, the board, the management, they should bow their heads in shame. The Ghana Airport Company belongs to all of us. You are taking decisions on our behalf. If you are not proud of the decisions that you take, if you will not be proud when it goes public, then don't take those decisions. Okay, um, Mr. Blackwell, take, you might want to take, uh, just hold on for, for us briefly. Um, of course, we'll get into you, your concerns uh, and to understand why you're coming from the perspective you're coming uh, from. But also joining us now is the board chair of the Ghana Airports Company Limited, uh, Mr. Paul Adumotri, who's uh, also a veteran broadcaster uh, joining this conversation. Uh, Mr. Adumotri, thank you for spending some time with us here on Top Story. Um, you, you just heard um, Samuel Okujito Blackwa, the MP there, raising uh, initial concerns even about the arrangement uh, frontiers going home uh, with some uh, 80 plus million dollars uh, there's the issue about the revenue distribution between frontiers uh, and uh, also uh, the Ghana airports company you you do a percentage breakdown and that's bringing us to some 93.3 percent of the income going to the private firm and 6.7 percent uh, coming to us as a state. C- can you clarify the basis for this uh, sharing ratio? How was it determined? <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm, not, I'm wondering why you have put so many <coughs> so many press accounts on the program, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, what, it's for the obvious <laughs> reasons, so I understand. <laughs> I'd like to begin with uh, Honorable Blackman's concerns about the so-called what he describes as the irresponsibility of the company, not responding, etc., etc., and occasioning a fine. Now, that, that's not correct. It's not correct to say the company was irresponsible. What happened is that if you look at the RTI law, there's a portion of the law that says that 
where the information is sought, it's already in the public domain. The, uh, the, the, the person who is being asked for the information can refer those seeking the information to that document. Our uh, understanding of the matter is that the Minister of Transport has spoken about these matters, not on one occasion, but on two occasions before Parliament. It is found in Parliament Hazard. At his vetting, the minister's uh, 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 hearing before the Appointments Committee of Parliament, these questions came up and he dealt with them. And then again, there was a question on the floor of the House by no lesser person than the minority leader, the Honorable Idrisu Haruna, as he then was. And our uh, Minister for Transport dealt with it. So the matters were in the public domain. As a matter of fact, Joy FM had had occasion to discuss a certain ratio of 20 million and 1 million at the time. This discussion was extended, and many other radio stations discussed it about the person who is doing the testing had 20 million on GSL, but uh, GSL is Ghana Airport Company Limited. GSL got, got 1 million. So the, the issues going on at the airport relating to testing had been matters in the public domain. It was our considered view, and so was the view of our legal team, that we should write to the RTI Commission and cite that part in the RTI Act that the matters are already before the, in the, the public domain. And therefore, if Joe FM, CTFM, Peace FM wants the information, they can access it from Parliament Hansard. Now, the RTI Commissioner mm. took a different view of the matter. I'm happy to report that last week we met with him and told him that this is our view of the matter. He gave us his view of the matter. After George, George, we thought that, okay, fair enough, we will respond. So it's not correct to come on radio and call people names. Uh, the so, second sorry, and of course, the, the account now are, are, are a bit uh, conflicting because no, no, uh, from no. the team, yes, Raymond, you want to come Specifically, through. the mm. response on the seven, September 19th letter, mm -hmm. which was sent to us, that was the first response from the airport company, was that it was exempt. Then they proceeded to actually tell us some of the reasons why they believe it could not be given to us. And the reasons included that they were not the ones who did the testing and who did the collection of the money at the airports. Mm. They didn't say that the, the, the information was in the public domain. They also proceeded to say that they were the not rent. privy to yeah. that particular list of reasons. Mm -hmm. At no point was this issue about it was it, information being in the public domain raised Mr. in any of the responses to us. Mr. Mr. Adomotri, you want to re respond to that? Yes. And, and and, and in addition to that, Raymond, it is also important to emphasize that it is not accurate to say that this information is in the public domain. It is not. We have been asking yeah, yeah, consistently yeah, uh, about the full Samuel contract. Blackwa, I'll, I'll give you the opportunity shortly. I just want uh, Paul Adumotri to deal with that for, for us. Mm. ...was made in total by... Uh, uh, Paul Adumotri, uh, sorry, let, let's listen to Paul. Uh, I'll give you all the never been in the public domain. Hello? Hello? Yes, uh, Paul, yes. Yeah, can you hear me, Phil? Yes, uh, you're, you're live. Uh, okay, so when we say it's in the public domain and someone says it's not been in the public domain, it is for that reason that the document that was read in your studio is a reference to something the minister said on the floor of the House of Parliament. If something is said on the floor of the House of Parliament and it's captured by the parliamentary hands that, and another person says it's not in the public domain, I'm at a loss. What is a public... The parliamentary hands that document is not public domain. I don't understand that. The document that we have sent to you, we are quoting from the parliamentary hazard, which is a public document. How is is what are you quoting? What are you quoting? What, what information is contained in the hazard? And what are we looking for? That is the issue. Uh, okay. What uh, you are quoting from the answer? Uh, so, so uh, let's 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 then deal. Uh, and gentlemen, because there are so many issues, were, were uh, you know stressed uh, in terms of time. Uh, let's do this. Uh, uh, Paula Dumocho, you'd have to deal with uh, the issue about you know capacity. It's it's also coming up strongly. The fact that you have uh, Noguchi and other research um, uh, centers uh, who uh, which we have in this country uh, who could have provided the same service. Um, are you able to deal with that aspect for us uh, as to why Frontiers was? was yeah, I, I was hearing the Honorable Ablakwa. I, I don't know what, I didn't hear what you are saying. Ablakwa says that the matter is not in the public domain. Yeah, can I, can I, can I clarify that point? Yes, quickly, quickly. Yes, please, yes. Yes. Until this point, we have never been told how much in total Frontiers made. That specific information has been requested. We have never been told how many people. Can I come in? Can I come in? Frontiers, frontiers, frontiers tested. Okay, 
Okay, can I those numbers, those numbers have not been provided. You don't just say that, oh, there's some information in the hands that oh, okay. so the, the matter is in the public domain. Right. Uh, okay. Specifically. Right, I get it. Uh, Paul? Consistently. Yes. I have done that right from the appointments committee in parliament. Okay. We'll give you ample time to also advance your arguments. Let, let's listen to Paul Adomotri uh, explain the issues to us. Uh, then, then we'll give you the floor, sir. And that does not mean that what we are looking for has been in the public domain. I get it. We'll give you the time to do that. Paul, let's, let's hear you. Uh, I'm saying that what, what is uh, concerning is easily resolvable. So when the minister went to parliament, when the minister went to parliament, the question was asked. The question after the time of the testing, so you might see despite the figure because this testing is ongoing. So, testing results of Monday, in terms of how much money anybody has made, how many people have been tested, will be certainly different from Friday. So, what you, your Joe FM's letter is after September. The minister's uh, appearance before parliament was much earlier. He was asked that as of today, and that's when the minister gave the information of the 20 million to 1 million, which you discussed, other radio stations discussed. That is at the time that the minister was being vetted because the, vetted, the testing is an ongoing process. So every day the figure changes. I thought this was easy for everybody to understand. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but, but let's deal with the issue about capacity, as I was asking. No, I'm saying this, this issue of calling board members and management's reckless has to be dealt with because... I, I, I get it, uh, but, but I want us to make progress. So I, I want us to make that. progress. But a human being and his work. I, I, I want so us to make progress. Jump, that, that's why I want us to deal with the aspect. That's right. why I want us to deal with the aspect of, about capacity. I was just asking the question on capacity. The, the fact that we have uh, local firms, uh, I mean, I'm talking about state agencies that can carry out equal research and also testing at the airports. I'm wondering wh why the... The company uh, was flippant about that, if, if, if you may allow me to use that word. I, I don't understand what you're saying because you have not resolved the issue of board members and management being reckless. Or matter that uh, they were not reckless. That, that's uh, just, just by the side. Question. I want us to, you know, address other concerns that are associated with the contractor. I understand that. But if it's your integrity that is being impugned, you wouldn't say we should address other questions. This is very important. So, so, so Senna, 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 I agree, I agree, I agree with Paul. Senna. If I can come in, am I on? Uh, yes, uh, I, I want us to yes, deal with that I, I, aspect. I agree, I, agree, uh, I agree with Paul that we, we must discuss this recklessness of the board. And I insist, I'm even going to deepen it and highlight I, the, I, get, the I, get, I get that of, part. Of I, I get that part. But if you, if, you read, if you read their own response, and, and Paul Adomocho is being disingenuous, their own response, they stated clearly, we've all read it, that that information is exempt that the monies were paid to frontiers. Today, he's telling us that the reason why they were not willing to be forthcoming as public officials under a, a, a transparent and, and accountable regime as the Constitution expects of all of us. You say that that conduct is not reckless. Now you are changing the goalpost, saying that it, you, you thought, you took the considered view that the information was in the public domain. But that's not what you wrote. That was not the justification you provided for refusing to respond to the RTI request, for which the okay, RTI Commission I find you. That one. So that is not conduct we can celebrate. It is not conduct we can glorify. And I insist that, particularly for Paul, who is a senior journalist who we have all admired for many years, uh, I must add until recently, you know, it's not conduct <laughs> that we should praise. And, and I'm happy to stay with him on this matter. Okay, you, can, you, I can I tell me, Joe FM, can I tell me? It okay, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, and just so, and just to point out that Kwame Asiri's okay. support is, is still with us. I have so. already, I've already told you, I've, I've already told you that we had a conversation with the RTI boss about this. The point uh, uh, Honorable Ablakwa makes about the fact that and Joy FM makes the point too that we said that the uh, information was exempt. Yes, we certainly said that when Parliament passed the RTI law, they put in exemptions. Why did Parliament put in the exemptions so that if a state agency says that we are exempt, that means we are reckless. The parliament put up an RTI law, ABCD, and said that EDS is exemptions. Where the information is XYZ, it can be exempted. Where so so and so, and if a state agency receives a request from an important media house like Joy FM, and we look at it, and our legal view is that, oh, are we not exempt? We are exempt. 
And then we say we are exempt. And as their commissioner tells us, no, you are not exempt. And then we say, well, but the information is already there. He said that, well, therefore, let me explain to you what the RCA commissioner said. He said, while the information may be in the Hansard, the Hansard is not the document of the Ghana Airport Company. Therefore, as far as his legal opinion is concerned, Ghana Airport Company cannot avail itself of that because the Hansard is for Parliament. So that if the request went to Parliament, Parliament could have told Joe FM that it's in a Hansard. But Ghana Airport Company, that cannot say it's in a Hansard because the Hansard is not for us. If we had a newspaper, that we had published it in it, then we could have said so. That's what we understood. And we are a growing society. We I, have I done a new RTI law. Thanks to President Akufuado and his, his, his anti-corruption, he has passed an RTI law. I, I, so, so, so that, Republic, yeah, so, so, so it appears that uh, that's law. out of let the way finish. now. Uh, Black White speaking, let me finish. I'm saying that thanks to President Akufuado's anti-corruption uh, yeah. instincts. The point. Hey, the only president of the Fourth Republic who has passed an RCI okay, so, law. Okay, so now let's deal. Yeah, let's deal with the contract the uh, proper. Uh, uh, let's, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul. Let's uh, and uh, you know we are running out of time. So let's deal with the uh, substantive issues surrounding the contract itself because that's also critical to look at. I was asking about capacity, and then uh, because of time, I was just tying the point about even. Uh, the necessary um, licensing and registration for the firm at the center of this. Uh, there's, for instance, the aspect about HEFRA, which regulates uh, health facility uh, institutions across the country. The argument is that even this company that you outsourced failed to get that license even at the start of the uh, of the award of the contract so so how do you tie that in to local capacity having noguchi and the likes to deal with that and also the integrity of the company itself hello is there a question for me uh, a question for you paula domotri uh, have we overcome the integrity issues which are very very important i, I, think, I, I think the point i think the point is well made so so let's deal let's deal with this now so there's no problem about it let me put on record to listen and this question about HEFA or whatever, I already dealt with it with your reporter. However, as far as this interview is going, an integrity issue has been raised. A recklessness name has been called. Paul, Paul, we are, we, Paul we've gone past that. Uh, Paul, we cannot go past it because the RTI law allows uh, exemptions. Yes, I appreciate that. Let, just, just answer my questions for me. Reckless. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with that, and then we'll, we can get back to it if we have some time. So the issue is about but the necessary... If your, if your father was on the board and is being called reckless, you won't jump this. Uh, I, I get that. I appreciate the fact you, you've read the, 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 RTI, the RTI commission has already has already ruled on your conduct at the board and has said that you got it wrong. Okay, Paul, that Paul. You, that, you could, me, that you could not deny... Because uh, you are all trying to make your points, uh, we're not able to have a healthy discussion. Uh, we'll, in fact, uh, <laughs> deal with this uh, proper... Let, let me bring in Kwame Sapo Asiedu, who's uh, with, with uh, CDD, he's a research uh, fellow with CDD, uh, and also understands uh, public health matters. Um, Kwame Thank you for joining us. Uh, your, your thoughts also on what you've been hearing so far? Um, thank you, Blessed. Um, I find everything going on, and I do because it could be a contract between Frontiers and anybody for the biomedical testing. That you have is the airport authority renting the space having a license from the FDA Who has with frontiers for the actual biomedical testing to be able to take patient as a biomedical product uh, and test uh, Kwame Sapong, we, we seem to be losing you intermittently uh, if you could just uh, reposition yourself for us again uh, Okay, uh, we'll, we'll try and work the lines of uh, Kwame Sapong uh, Asiedu shortly. Uh, uh, Paul, let me get back to you one more time. The issue is about capacity, the issue about HEFRA. How do you deal with that, sir? Hello, Paul Adomotri? 
Uh, let's see if Samuel could you to a black white still with that. Uh, Honorable Samuel, could you to a black white? You're making a point earlier. Uh, okay, we've lost uh, uh, Samuel Okuja to a black white there uh, after that heated exchange. Um, it's uh, bringing us uh, to the top of the hour. And for those of you who uh, are, of course, uh, now hearing of it, uh, Joy News is now uncovering uh, that fine detail of uh, the contract that was awarded uh, by the Ghana Airports Company to the Frontier Healthcare Services uh, Limited. Uh, let, let's try one more time and see if uh, we can we can get uh, Paula Dumotri uh, much more uh, clear. Uh, uh, Mr. Dumotri, lost to you uh, briefly the point about uh, you know capacity and also the heifer issues i was raising earlier i, I get it i get it and uh, about capacity and heifer will deal with it i have already dealt with that as a chief it's important to deal with calling of people names senior people there are people who are on my board who are over 60 years old they've been chartered accountants forever you call them reckless because we go to an rti law the law allows exemptions. Parliament passed the exemptions. When Parliament was passing the exemptions, didn't my Honorable Abhakwa see it? Was he not there? And so if we try to access the exemptions passed and accepted by Parliament, we are called reckless. I cannot accept So, that. so I get that and point. That One more time, the issue society. about uh, why Frontiers and not Noguchi and the others. How about that? That, that, that question you have asked, it has been settled in your answer. There was a process. They went through a process. FDA is involved in the process. Noguchi is involved in the process. The Ministry of Health is involved in the process. You are saying that there's something called HEFA that the emerging company did not have. I have not heard HEFA before. I told your reporter, this is the first time I'm hearing it. I don't know how you came to the conclusion that the emerging company doesn't have it. But if you want to know, then we have to give you the official information. You might as well come back to RTI. But and now that it has come to my attention, I will find out. But I don't know how you got to know that the emerging company did not have HEFA. Is it the HEFA people who have told you? Have they written to you to say that? Do you write to request it? FDA tell you? I don't know where that uh, is and going. As part, and I'm just wondering, as part of due diligence, did you request the company to provide and furnish you with those compliant details uh, before awarding the contract? Sir? From what I have read, in, what, in terms of what happened, the FDA was involved. The Food and Drugs Authority were involved, and they certified it. Noguchi was involved with the process. Indeed, in fact, the implementation of the testing, Noguchi was involved. So you are saying there's something called HEFA, and that the emerging company didn't have the, the HEFA license. What is HEFA? Who told you they didn't have the license? Did the company uh, write Paula Dumoche, I recall the, 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 I recall the health minister, uh, Paula Dumoche, I, I recall the health minister saying uh, before the parliament uh, you know, uh, committee uh, that indeed the company did not have the certification and that subsequently was done. But if the health minister said it, why are you asking me? Uh, we're just wondering why it was not done from the start uh, as part of the, the question. The health minister said it on the, listen to you, the health minister said it on the floor of parliament. Now that is public information, we understand. Anything said on the floor of the parliament is absolute public information. So the health minister said it, he has given the information to the public. A year or two years later, you're asking the, the board member why the health minister said what he said. I don't understand your question. Can you say it again? Okay. Uh, and, and, and let's still now, uh, you know, with, with uh, the way forward uh, and obviously the reaction that are beginning the to... Are question and accepting that the question you asked was not have been asked? If you are moving away from that and accepting that the question you asked... I, I'm, I'm just doing that for the sake of time, uh, Paula Dumotri. Uh, the, the, the final issue about, you know, the reactions greeting this, I was just uh, going through some comments on, online. And, uh, of course, the, the suggestion is being made that if this were to be a private firm, uh, many of you sitting on the board uh, would not have allowed this kind of ratio, uh, as uh, Samuel Kujitua Blackwell is describing it, a ripoff. Um, as board chair, do you hold a personal opinion on how much this private firm is making or, or taking home now? Uh, okay, uh, it appears uh, we've lost uh, Paul, Paula Dumotri there, uh, board chair of the Ghana Airports Company. Uh, unfortunately, too, we've uh, lost uh, the not member of parliament.